This is the Fujinon XF 200mm f2 lens. I've had it on loan for about a week and a half now and I've fallen a little bit in love with it and I really don't want to give it back. Okay, the Fujinon XF 200mm f2. So let's talk through the basics. We've got a 200mm focal length and obviously an f2 aperture. It's a big old bit of glass right on the end here if I just take off this lens hood. I hope you can see that on the camera. It actually has a 105mm filter ring at the front and then on the body it's kind of got everything that you'd expect from a telephoto lens so we have af buttons on the side here like other fujifilm lenses we have a manual aperture ring and you do have a, a automatic setting there so you can just let the camera control what you're doing i found it really nice to be able to sort of change the aperture whilst holding the the lens makes it feel a very natural and then on the side here we have all the usual limiting options so we have the full range which is the minimum focus distance is 1.8 meters and then we have a five meter to infinity range as well on here. There is optical image stabilization switch on and off there. Very impressive, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then we have an AF preset button and an AF lock. Obviously the AF lock locks in place. Then we have just full time AF and then a preset. And you can set that by pressing this button there. And what that does is when you press the button, it will automatically focus to a set position. We have a tripod foot and collar just here, and that's obviously adjustable via that ring there. And actually on the back here, I've put the 1.4 times converter, because to me, that is where this lens starts to become really special. So the 200mm f2 is mounted here on Fujifilm's X-T3, which obviously has an APS-C size sensor, as do all of Fujifilm's other X-series cameras. So this lens is actually the same field of view as a 300mm lens on a full frame sensor camera. Now, if you add the 1.4 times converter, it becomes 420 millimeters. But then if you use Fujifilm's new 30 frames a second electronic shutter mode that's found in the X-T3, that times is it by a further 1.2, which means this lens and the teleconverter when you're using that mode is the equivalent of 504 millimeters. In effect, this becomes the equivalent of using a 500 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor camera. Now, obviously the resolution drops a little bit when you're in that electronic shutter mode, top of my head I think it goes down to around 18 million pixels and obviously if you're not using that mode you can always just crop in afterwards to get the same effect but it's great to have a 500 millimeter field of view all tucked away inside this tiny kind of body and lens. Now inside here there are 19 elements in 14 groups and the lens weighs 2.2 kilos it's a it's a heavy bit of glass obviously as you'd expect for something of this size and i was using it without the battery pack on the bottom but i feel that'd be a really useful addition just to help balance it a little bit more that said i had absolutely no problems shooting with this handheld with the xt3 and the lens mount you know it's pretty sturdy I, this isn't moving or buckling under the weight of that 2.2 kilos now this is kind of going to be a hands-on field test because it was difficult to do lens charts and all of those other tests with a lens of this magnitude but hopefully you'll get the idea of what it is actually like to use and what the image quality is like so speaking of the image quality it is stunning at f2 i shot probably 90 percent of my images at f2 just because it was that good the background bokeh is lovely. There's nothing sort of jagged or sharp or swirly about it. Everything is nice and soft and graduated, and it really makes the subject that you're focusing on just pop out from the background. Now, I spent a lot of time trying to find deer to photograph in this. Don't ask me why, I just got it in my head. So I went to actually a couple of different locations in the UK to do that, ended up in a deer park. Uh, but I did go out on some moors and try and photograph some red deer, but you just can't get close. They see you coming a mile away. You really have to sort of sit there all day and hope that they head in your direction. But in the deer park, could get a lot closer gradually over time, getting closer and closer and closer, to the extent that I got so close that in the end, I had to take the 1.4 times converter off because I was able to do it just with the kind of 200 millimeter focal length of the lens. 
but with the 1.4 you can get some nice shots from a distance you can capture some real close-up images and details of the deer and also photograph just some some ducks in my local pond some mandarin ducks though so they weren't you know bog standard ducks they were a little bit pretty and i was so impressed with the sharpness of the lens and the details that this was able to pull out from feathers and hairs on the deer and just little markings on them very very sharp like kind of unbelievably sharp for an f2 lens there's obviously a lot going on in terms of the lens design and engineering and fuji been known for their optics you know they do television optics as well and there's obviously a lot going on that has been borrowed possibly from some of those bits of glass to put into this lens very impressive image quality so the xt3 no in-camera stabilization so we're relying on what the lens can do here's the thing i didn't use a tripod or monopod once when i was out shooting with this combination the Optical stabilization on this is superb. I was shooting video clips handheld and they were just floating ever so slightly around. It was pretty unbelievable actually as to how good the optical stabilization in this lens is. Now on screen now, you should be watching a quick comparison where I'm just flicking the optical stabilization on and off on the lens so you can get an idea of just what a difference it makes. And again, just remember that I'm using the 1.4 times converter for the vast majority of the images that you're seeing here. So it's a 500 millimeter full frame equivalent. And I'm hand holding this lens and I'm kind of shooting at 125th of a second. And it's, it's faultless. The sharpness is spot on. And again, like I say, I could even use it for video handheld. Now, auto focusing didn't really have a problem. I mean, the sensor in here, it's rumored to be made by Sony. It's backside illuminated. It's got copper wiring. It does the 30 frames a second flicker free viewfinder, which again is similar to the A9. And in many ways, I found the X-T3 of this lens to perform like a baby Sony A9. Now I used the A9 and the 400mm f2.8 lens when it first came out. I shot a soccer football game, sorry, a football game with that. And again, the focusing for that was spot on. And this is quite comparable. Photographing the deer, they're obviously fairly slow moving, although I did get some of them galloping. Did deer gallop? Anyway, they were running, the deer were running and I was able to track them. Now, obviously that's sideways on, so it shouldn't be too taxing for the AF. It's not like they're running towards you or backwards, kind of sideways. But again, the camera and the AF system managed to track the deer fine. Occasionally it would obviously jump perhaps from one deer to another where they're running in a group, but you kind of expect that because the, the camera's looking for sort of a color pattern and texture and they all look very similar. But no problems tracking them sort of sideways motion. Generally for wildlife, I think it's going to be absolutely you know, spot on. It's very fast, very responsive, works nicely with the camera. Now, I did photograph a friend's football training under some floodlights. Now, the floodlights were pretty dark still. The camera was still able to autofocus quite successfully, but I really had to push the ISO up on the camera. And I was using just 200 mil i wasn't using the teleconverter so i was at f2 but still because the, i had to push the iso lacked a little bit of detail there's a little bit less sharpness in it obviously because i'm pushing the iso up to 6400 12800 but focusing wise i have to say it, it nailed it again it was able to track people running towards me and what was really interesting was i was able to use the iaf i had face detection iaf on and where there was enough light on the person's face I was filming, the camera picked that up and it locked onto the eye. It was quite interesting actually, because you could see as a, a player sort of turned and was a little bit more in the floodlight, all of a sudden the, the face detection and then the IAF would kick in. But if they moved their head so it was slightly in shadow, only half their face was seen, then it wouldn't pick it up and it would result back to kind of, you know, zone or tracking focus. I generally use the wide tracking mode for the focus. And again, it worked quite well. It stayed locked onto the players quite reasonably. It's obviously very confusing photographing football because you've got players running in front of each other, running in front of the goal. There's a lot going on, a lot of movement, not just from the subjects you're photographing. But I'd be happy to photograph a full match with this camera and lens combination. 
Now, in terms of weather sealing, there are 17 different weather seals on here. Now, these are going to be behind all of the buttons and all of the joins in the lens. I didn't test it in the rain, but, you know, I feel fairly confident at the, the price it is. And with that amount of weather seals, I would be able to take it out in a light downpour. Now, the lens itself is available now and it costs £5,400. So it's not cheap, but again, this lens is going to be for wildlife photographers, it's gonna be for sports photographers, it's gonna be people who earn a living shooting those kind of things. So for them, it's gonna enable them to use their X-T3, X-T2 even cameras. But for me, what's more interesting is, this is kind of a statement for Fujifilm. It's a big lens, it's something that people have always said you can't do with Fujifilm cameras. You can't photograph moving subjects, you can't photograph sports and things like that. You know, it's difficult. But the X-T3 sort of seems to have the AF to be able to do it. In my opinion, it's not quite as good as the Sony A9 and 400mm combination. But I'll tell you what, it's not far off it. And remember, this is the first time Fuji have used this sensor. I'm sure there are going to be more AF tweaks and firmware updates, which we know Fujifilm are really good at. So it's exciting to see another brand possibly getting in on that sports and wildlife market with this lens. And you know, I can't wait to see what other telephoto lenses Fujifilm are going to be bringing out, hopefully in the not too distant future, the lenses that will really complement this. But as I say, in summary, the 200 millimeter F2 Fujinon lens, I really enjoy using it. I shot nearly everything at F2 wide open. That's how sharp and confident I was in the image quality with it. It pairs really nicely with the X-T3. I would recommend the battery grip if you are thinking of getting it, but if you're shooting sports wildlife, you're gonna want that grip on the bottom. You've probably already got one anyway. Quality wise, build and handling, just, you know, it's a nice lens. It feels like any other telephoto lens from any other major camera manufacturer, really. Very impressed with the teleconverter. Again, nearly all of my shots were with the teleconverter, and I didn't notice any kind of drop off in image quality, really, with the 1.4. Oh, and it should just add here as well that the eye detection AF works with the teleconverter attached as long as there's enough light it will still kick in and work again something to consider if you're photographing sports something like tennis where you've got a player kind of roughly standing on the same spot it's going to be able to pick up that IAF quite nicely if you haven't watched photo gear news we put up videos like this around about once a week first look videos reviews occasionally technique videos so if you want to keep up to date with all the latest photo gear news and reviews please just take a second to hit that subscribe button so that you can catch our next video